Hey guys, I'm Francois Beaufort. I'm a Chrome Evangelist at Google, and I'm based in Google Paris. And first of all, I was expecting 10, 15 people. So first, so thank you. Uh, so today I would like to talk about NFC plus Chrome. Uh, first of all, you may already know that Chrome is the most popular browser in the world. It's present on mobile, tablet, and desktop, which means Windows, Mac, Linux, Chrome OS, iOS, and Android. What you may not know, though, is that it's powered by the open source project Chromium. And obviously, Google is a big committer to Chromium, but they are, it's not the only one. NVIDIA, Intel, Opera, Yandex are also committed to the project. There is actually one guy in Microsoft who pushed some code to Chromium. So if you don't know what to do this weekend, I may recommend you check out chromium.org website and, I don't know, just have fun. That's what I do. And today we are here to talk about the Chrome app. If you did not attend the free hour session from Joe Marini last Tuesday on Chrome apps, I will try to summarize what he said. So basically, a Chrome app is immersive, which means you can't tell the difference between a native app and a Chrome app. And why am I saying that? Because they are radically different. First of all, they are based on web technologies, HTML5, CSS3, and GS. So if, like me, you are a web developer, you don't have to learn another language. You already know how to build a Chrome app. Then they are secure. And that is because of a very, very strict content security policy. How many people know about the content security policy here? Just two. That's five. That's a lot, actually. Uh, really? <laughs> um, that's not specific to Chrome app. If you run a web server, so let me try to summarize what is a content security policy. Basically, your uh, web server sends an HTTP header to your browser to tell, OK, my website is allowed to load those specific resources from those certain sources. Let's say I'm toto.com, and I will say, OK, so this uh, JavaScript file can only be loaded from my website, and, uh, and that's all. Uh, the iframe can only be loaded from YouTube and Vimeo. My, uh, my images can only be loaded from my website and my CDN. And that's pretty much it. And that's really important. If you don't do it, just check out. Uh, you just have to Google Mike West. That's the, name, that's the guy in Google who works on it. And you will find lots of talk about that. And the Chrome apps have also this content security, which is basically don't do anything evil. Then it's not because they're using web technologies that they run, uh, they have to, um, they have, you have to have an internet connection to load them because they are intending to work offline by default. It's basically your responsibility as a developer to provide a good offline experience. And then, finally, even though the web is great, like for the past five years, we've got WebRTC, the Web Audio API, that's really cool, but there are still some stuff we can't do, especially interacting with external devices such as Bluetooth, serial, USB. And to them, I'm going to talk about the USB API. I'm going to talk about the USB API. This one. So this is a YouTube video, and I'm sure I won't have a reliable connection, so I basically downloaded it. Converters and a little resistor so that we can go from min to The max. guy on the left, you can see um, actually his name, is so yeah, Irish. He's a Google developer working the Chrome DevTools. And the guy on the right is Dave Geddes. And basically what he's done is he built a Chrome app. And this is really, really cool. What you do is, so the Chrome app basically listens to what you say. And based on a list of words, it will send a small S to this home-made box. And if you hold this box while you sing this word, it will send you an electric shock. It's, so that's the first one, the small one. It's scale, that's normal. OK, that was the small one. And it's all built with web technology. Now the next one is the big one. OK, OK. That's the USB Chrome API. And when I saw that, I said, oh my god, this is so cool. I need to do something that cool. But I didn't find any use case. And like a few months ago, Alexis, a colleague of mine, said, 
oh, you know, Francois, DevOx is coming. And last year, they made some really cool stuff with Android and NFC. And do you think we could do something similar with Chrome? And I say, uh, no, we don't have support for NFC yet. And, but I remember this USB API. I said, oh, my god, USB NFC? If you just USB NFC really exists, no? So I started to look into it, and we found two popular devices. And the ACR122U is actually the one that fits what we wanted. So now, what I needed is an API, like a big wrapper around this Chrome USB API to be able to talk to this reader. Problem is, I'm a evangelist. I'm a developer, okay, but I don't have a, a good, strong skill set. So I needed someone else to help me. And I was lucky because I found another guy, another Googler, actually, who was willing to spend some time to build this API. Problem was, he was living in Taipei. And I was living in Paris, so it was really hard to coordinate, even though we, were, we wanted to do the same thing. You know, those time were just annoying. So we didn't know if we could make it. But if you, if you stumble upon the registration desk, you may have seen that. Those are Chromebook Pixel with USB and NFC reader plugs to it. And what we've done, basically, this, uh, this Chrome app can write, read to your RISBN, your NFC RISBN. Before the demo, let me show you the code, because the code is beautiful. If you're already familiar with uh, Chrome API, that's how it should look. You just have to call device and you get as a callback a list of all the devices connected to your machine. It's not just about the Chromebook. Chromebook is just because it looks cool and it's nice, it's Chromebook pixels. But you can do that with your crappy machine. It works also. I'm not kidding. Uh, once you get your device, you want to read Chrome and FC.read. Specify the device, an optional timeout, and you get the message and the type of NDF message you get. You want to read? As simple as that. You can write as many NDF messages you want, a text, a UI, and actually the UI message is if you uh, tap your NFC wristband to your phone right now, it will basically go to this, uh, to this website to download the app. If you want to emulate NDF content, just replace write with emulate tag. Problem was, so writing text and UI is cool, but we wanted to write specific bytes to specific sectors. So I asked Louis, actually the guy who wrote that library, can you do that? Yes. This is what we use to write to a specific sector. You specify, you specify sorry, the block, the key, because sometimes it's public authentication on my fair classic key, or uh, private authentication, the data you want to pass, and boom. Read works too. Let me show you how it works. Let me show you how it works. This is the Chrome app. If I just touch it, I scan it, and then it will read what I have. So there is no blah, 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 because it's, it's obvious. But it's working. So what I've done, I just plug this USB NFC reader and this Chrome app, I'm able to read and write to the, NF, uh, to, the, uh, to the NFC tag, the NFC tag. Now what's next? We want to fix some bugs because like, we were on a rush and we wanted it for DevOx. We also want to improve performance. As you may have seen, it's kind of slow right now. And the reading and writing part is not slow, it's just the detecting. So uh, maybe it's the device, maybe just us, but we need to fix that. And then we want to open source this library so that anyone in the world can use this awesome library to write and write to the NFC tags. That's pretty much it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> if you have any question, now or not. Sorry? What do if you have the connection, uh, no, sorry. No, right now it doesn't work for it. But, uh, so this is a Chrome app. That means it works on desktop. 
but they are working on bringing those Chrome apps to mobile. So basically, when the USB API will be uh, developed for mobile, I guess it will work, yes. Uh, when the USB API will be uh, specified by uh, the W3C, so basically when Google, Mozilla, and all those guys will say, okay, that's how we should uh, build this API, yes. Yep. It's, uh, so basically the guy just read the data sheet of this device and implemented it. So it's raw USB protocol. I guess it should be, yeah? If you find the device, yeah. Yeah, just like what this guy d has done basically is just reading the data sheet and, and send a message via the USB protocol and that's all. That's all, that's a lot, but that's all. <laughs> Okay.